Uh, good morning and good afternoon to the subscribers of the Global Energy Association. Uh, this is the continuation of our series of talks to the people who happen to be, find, found themselves in the shortlist for this year's prize. And today we are talking to none other than Professor Rubia. Professor, I can't see your face. Can we please you can your... see my face. I, I can can't see, see your face. Uh, wait a minute, it's not enough light. Maybe. Ah, now we can see. Oh, you can see. Sorry, yeah, there, sorry. There, there he is. Uh, it's just uh, a funny. Just a quick. Now we are now we're all set. That's that's how works li life works after you get a Nobel Prize for physics. It's on your mobile and it works perfectly well. Yes. I'm joined today by Sophia Morgan, who's uh, our assistant vice president at the association, and Professor Rubia, of course. I've already mentioned him being a Nobel uh, laureate in physics of 1984, has been shortlisted for this year's prize and he has also served many years ago now on the international committee of our award yes uh, before i say anything else may i uh, confess to that i'm in deep 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 love with your native town of garizia this unique ah, place fine. on the italian well, it's, Slovenian it's, border. Uh, it's, uh, it's, things are not getting very good those days a lot of people Find, don't find their jobs and so forth. It's not so. <laughs> I've heard that, although, well, the Slovenian side must be. The borderline it. always complicated. Yes, but very few people realize that other than Berlin, Gorizia is the only place on earth where there was a wall. Although the most famous photo from Gorizia from the Cold uh, War era is when people played volleyball. Correct. The right. atmosphere there was somewhat different. Before, so before I switch into lyrics, let's switch into Sophia because she is our scientifically uh, advanced person in this association. Sophia, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Rubia, uh, though your Nobel Prize uh, was for the particle physics, for the last 20 years you have been influential in nuclear energy field and where you have been a strong advocate for thorium. By being the better nuclear fuel, thorium has so many opponents. It is cheap, it is safe, it is free of radioactive waste, but it would have brought nuclear power to its height, but for some reason it didn't. Why? Are you talking about nuclear power? Yeah. Well, it's a complicated business. Uh, nuclear power really uh, developed itself in conditions which are no longer the conditions today. And so therefore big changes are required in order to be able to make sure that nuclear power is available, let's say, to everybody, because any form of energy cannot be localized only to a few people. And therefore, you have to make basic changes, especially the real question, which I have addressed myself, is the possibility of using thorium instead of uranium as a main source of energy. Since thorium can be produced, it can produce very short, much shorter lifetime from the point of view of the radioactive substances. While uranium lasts, for, as you know, for millions of years. And this is something which is, nobody knows how to solve. So I believe the nuclear power will have a future, but the future nuclear power will be only possible if there are major changes. And there are very few people today which are willing now to change the situation respect to the original situation she was in the past. Well, however, the situation is changing, and I was reading this report, I think by Bloomberg Agency, just yesterday, about major oil and gas companies saying uh, that they uh, no longer are going to explore the existing oil and gas fields. Uh, I think BP was mentioned among other, uh, other companies like that, because a new era of alternative uh, uh, energy is, uh, is about to emerge. Um, where do you see a space for the nuclear energy then? Uh, I think, as I said, the nuclear power requires uh, uh, democratization. Uh, nuclear power has to be more democratic than it is. Nuclear power is usually connected so much with the question of the weapons that only a few countries can really uh, activate that. While where the most of the needs exist today are not in those countries and the other countries, which are developing countries, so only anything we do to convince uh, a nuclear power to be a, an alternative source must supply an answer also to developing countries which have uh, the need for doing that. And the major region, of course, is radioactive waste. Radioactive waste is, a, is a too long a thing to be considered valid unless, uh, and the question is therefore, 
to replace it with, uh, with uh, as I said at the beginning, uh, uh, replacing with uh, uh, uranium with, uh, with thorium. And also uh, the other possibility is to eliminate the accelerator, uh, replace accelerator to accelerated particles. Today, in many countries, including Russia, there's a huge development of accelerating particles uh, methods. And those methods can be produced today, enough energy also to become sources of uh, nuclear power. And therefore, uh, association within the nuclear power and the accelerator uh, technology, it seems to me is very important issue which has to be understood because accelerators are offering us the possibility to control on and off the source of energy, while nuclear power in itself is very difficult to control. If driven by an accelerator, it becomes easy. You just switch off the accelerator and the thing disappears. How do you sell the nuclear power to the developing world, as you said? Because the developing world may be rather confused. They look at Europe and they see very diverse examples. They see Russia, where 20% of electricity generation is based on nuclear energy. They look at France, where nearly 100% of, of electricity comes from uh, nuclear stations. They look at the UK, which has rediscovered nuclear uh, energy in this last several years. But they also look at Germany, which has been systematically closing coal. Well, coal, we also Japan. Japan is a and, and, yeah. Well, so, 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 you know, there are, of course, countries out there, China, India, Iran, for that matter, who are building nuclear nuclear plants. Egypt and Turkey are also going to build uh, nuclear stations with, with the Russian technical help, by the way. But what do you say to people who look at Germany and say, we don't need it? Well, I mean, Germany, in principle, is capable of producing nuclear power whenever they want. Now, they are very concerned about nuclear power. They want to have... Uh, uh, energy from wind and from uh, other forms. That it seems to me this is not a practical solution. It seems to me that the renewable energies are not really a practical solution for the mass use within the world. In the sense that uh, they are more expensive than other sources, uh, they are in fact very uh, difficult to operate, and very ex and therefore it seems to me that an alternative to alternative to uh, renewable energies are a fundamental item which we have to pursue. I don't believe nuclear energy will, uh, renewable energy will be able to replace the, the ordinary production of energy. Uh, most of the energy in Germany is produced by coal. And this is it's certainly so not, a, it's not a good thing because coal is a full, uh, natural gas will be much better. We yeah. developed, for instance, a method in which we take natural gas and we produce natural gas without CO2 emissions. We take natural gas and through the certain technology which I have developed, it is possible to uh, uh, collect the energy coming from the hydrogen, but do not uh, use the carbon to produce the CO2. And therefore it becomes producing black carbon, which is a material which can be used for many different things. So it would seem to me that uh, that is something very exciting, which should be developed industrially. We do need to have some industrial people willing to take this over. Scientifically, from the point of view of the experiment itself, it's very well known from the point of view of the basic science. But basic science is not enough. You need also uh, big investment, big development. But in my view, uh, natural gas with no CO2 emission, it seems to me is a very interesting alternative, which is, is worth developing. Well, this answers my initial question about major oil and gas companies announcing in these last several days that they're not going to explore uh, the existing oil and, new, and, and gas new fields because the new renewables are replacing uh, the sources of energy which we are used to, but they, they are deceiving yourself, you're saying. Well, it seems to me the question is that energy can come from nuclei or can come from atoms. Uh, atomic energy is, in principle, extremely valuable in the sense that it produces a huge amount of energy for very most use of uh, resources. But it's certainly something which has to be blended with the possibility of developing energy from, from uh, natural resources. As I said, there's an example of the natural gas, of which there's plenty. Natural gas, if you normally use, there are many other sources of natural gas. There are natural gas, which is, for instance, all the oceans are full of uh, fluctuates, yeah. which are fundamentally natural gas. So we have natural gas to go for thousands of years. 
of very effective uh, utilization. And if we solve the problem of the carbon CO2 emissions, and we can do that without CO2 emissions, there is no reason why we don't should not use it. We continue to develop a, a, a situa situation in which energy is produced abundantly for, a, a, and, and without, without any drawbacks. Professor Rubia, you and I in our blue suits may be offending our good friend Sophia in her green dress today which is to underline her devotion to the renewables. So I'd rather shut up now and give floor to her, Sophia. Yeah, well, my... the renewables will win in the long run. Yeah, you guessed. My, my question will be right about renewables. I know that a lot of work have been done by you in this field, providing new solutions for solar thermal technologies. Uh, did you bring something from the nuclear there? I mean, this melted salt. As I said at the beginning to your colleague, uh, either you have uh, uh, energy from atoms or you have energy from nuclei. Energy from atoms is certainly uh, in the form of natural gas. It's certainly the easiest thing to do. Natural gas has the advantage with respect to coal, which is dramatically used by almost everybody. They have no emissions. It's clean. It can be produced in a, in a, in a simple way, as I said. If you do that in such a way that the CO2 emissions are co under control or eliminated, then it seems to me that the future uh, of mankind could very well develop in a situation in which you develop uh, energy from natural gas from various sources, conventional and unconventional sources of natural gas, and you can go on until such a time you will develop an appropriate form of nuclear, which eventually will come, but will not be the nuclear today, it will be something different. Uh, Professor Rubio, lastly, uh, on the 7th of September, our International Awards Committee, which you used to be a member, will gather to decide the fates of this year's prizes. Uh, the prizes are being awarded now uh, under three subnominations, traditional energy, conventional energy, if you please, non-conventional energy or renewables, if you please, and new applications of energy. But that's the matter uh, to be decided by the current uh, membership of the International Committee. Will you please share some of your memories about, about how the committee works. What do you actually wish to the international committee members? What do you, what, what do you, what do you recommend to them other than, of course, giving the prize to you? Uh, I mean, the committee are, are a difficult things to, to solve. I mean, people have to be very careful about uh, giving opinion to the committee. I wish that the committee will find a proper way of choosing between the alternatives we've indicated. I have all the respect for them. I'm sure they will come up with a good solution. And whichever solution comes out, it will be very the right one. That's a very good answer. <laughs> Rubio, thank, you so <laughs> thank you so much for your time. We wish you good luck. We wish well, good luck to all of the people from the shortlist. And we'll see what happens on 7th of September, or rather on the 8th, when the decision will be, will, will be, will be announced. Thank very you, good. sir. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. And thank you for talking to you. Grazie mille.